Well, 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 it's a good morning once again that we are gathered on this Thursday morning just to uh, reflect on God's word. Um, and I thank you for tuning in wherever you are. Um, it's always a pleasure, you know, to have you tune in. Um, and I trust that God will bless you because you are probably sacrificed something else to be able to tune in to this. May God bless you. I want us to pray, then we jump into today's conversation. Let's pray. Father God, for everyone that has tuned in today, a special word, oh God, a special word in Jesus' name. I pray uh, that you'll take over my mind and my tongue and help me to make sense, help me to uh, be clear to your people because we ask this in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen out there. You can type that amen. <laughs> and you can tag your friends uh, so they can be able to hear this, you know. You can tag their names so they can see the notification and tune in also because I believe this word will bless their life. We are, we are Deliverance Church Umoja is celebrating 40 years and I want to invite you, uh, if you're not part of Deliverance Church Umoja, next week we are going to be having a conference called the Days of Refreshing uh, from Monday up to Friday and then the 26th we're going to be having a major celebration um, at our Kangundo Road uh, facility um, along Kangundo Road, Deliverance Church Moja, Kangundo Road facility. But, but for the days of refreshing, we are going to be our, at our inner core facility, uh, the main church. Uh, you can come and join us from morning till evening, uh, Tuesday, Monday we are doing in the evening, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we're going to be there the whole day. You're welcome. And we're celebrating 40 years, and we've been reflecting on on, on 40 years and we are stuck with the, the children of Israel and their 40 years in the wilderness and the lessons that uh, we can pick from that because we are seeing parallel lessons to also the lessons, the things we have seen with Deliverance Church in the past 40 years. And one of the things that was parallel is that God led the children of Israel through the 40 years through the wilderness to bring them to the land of Canaan. And as we reflect on our 40 years as Deliverance Church, we are also seeing how God has led us and the amazing things that have happened. And we are challenging ourselves. How can we allow God to lead, a, lead us more and more as we learn? What are the lessons we can learn from both uh, these stories on how God leads us? And we said that sometimes when God leads us, it's not always the convenient route. Sometimes it's a challenging route. But also we say that that challenging route sometimes can have huge obstacles beyond our ability to handle. And when those huge obstacles are there, when those huge obstacles appear, then it is not our business to try and figure out how we'll sort out those obstacles. It is God's business. And I pray that God will begin to sort you out with those obstacles you may be facing and that God will make a way for you. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. When he leads you, he will make a way where there seems to be no way. When he leads you, he will provide. He will meet you where you are. That's what we learned from the children of Israel. Today, we are picking on um, yet another lesson. And we are picking this lesson from Exodus 13 from verse 21. And we are specifically focusing on verse 21. Exodus 13, verse 21. What does it say? It says this. And the Lord went before them day by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and by night. And did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night before the people of Israel. He led them night and day. And, and that's very instructive. See, God never left the children of Israel alone in their journey. His presence was always there, a reminder to them that they hadn't been left on their own in the wilderness. And, and, and it would be there by day as a pillar of cloud and by night as a pillar of fire. He guided them, giving them shade from the fierceness of the sun uh, during the day 
and the thick darkness of the night, he gave them light. See, God, God, God will not lead us just to fend for our to fend for ourselves. God will not lead us to fend for ourselves. That's, that's not the main idea of God leading us. To fend for ourselves or maybe to help us find our way when we are struggling. He will lead us because he has promised to be faithful. He will lead us because he is faithful. He will lead us because he is faithful. I remember the words of Apostle Paul, even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. He remains faithful. He's a steadfast God. And, and, and that's the beauty about God leading us. God is committed to lead us in every circumstance of our lives, night or day. Night or day. And that's the beauty of following God because he's not just committed to lead us um, in certain situations, he is interested in leading us in every situation of our lives. He is willing to show you the way night and day. He is present. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, I'm, and I must suggest, I must say something about God's leading. One of the ways, one of the things that God uses to lead us is his presence. And his presence was um, uh, symbolized by the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. His presence. He uses his presence to lead us. He uses his presence to lead us. That's why I must suggest to us as we watch this, if there's anything that we must value is to value being conscious of God's presence. And, and, and when we learn to, be, to value that, because if you read, read the story, sorry, if you read the story a little more, you will realize that God told Moses, I mean, this, these people you are leading, tell them, if the cloud does not move, if the pillar of fire stands, they must stop. If it moves, then they can move. So they were focusing on the symbol of God's presence. And when God is leading us, when we want God to lead us, we must learn how to be conscious of God's presence. We must learn how to focus on God's presence as, as the symbolism of God's leading. And, and that's why when God, told, when God told Moses in Exodus 33 that I'm not going to come with you, I'm not going to come with you. Um, but probably we could read that Exodus 33. It's very, it was a very uh, difficult moment for Moses. Um, it says, uh, verse 1, Then the Lord said to Moses, Depart and go up. At that point, God was angry with them. Depart and go up, you and the people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt, to the land which I have so uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was saying, now you go. Use whatever route you want to use. You know, just go. Whichever direction you want to go, go to that land. I've given it to you. In fact, you will find it, uh, you will find things are ready for you there. In, you know, your enemies will uh, have taken care of that. But just go. But then it says um, in verse 2, and I will send my angel before you and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, the Hittite, the Perizzite, the Hevite, the Jebusite, go up to the place of privilege, to a land flowing with milk and honey. But then he says something shocking. He says, but I'm withdrawing my presence. I am withdrawing the pillar of fire by night, and I am withdrawing the pillar of cloud by day. I am not going to go with you. He says, it says, I will not go up with you in your midst, lest I consume you on the way, for you are a stiff, naked people. It says, you can go, but I'm not going to go with you. Moses did not take it kindly. Moses pleaded with God. If you read the rest of Exodus 33, he says, God, no, 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 this cannot happen. This cannot happen. We don't want the privilege. We don't want the angel. We don't want all these things. And he pleaded. He stood before God. 
um, and prayed. And he says in verse 14, and he said, uh, um, uh, verse 15, sorry, Moses says in verse 15, if your presence does not go with us, bid us not to go. Do not bring us up from here. If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us from up from here. Moses understood that one of the key ingredients of figuring out God's leading is God's presence. We must value God's presence. That's why time with God is very critical. That's why pausing several times in the course of the day just to be conscious of God, to say, God, I, 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 I love you. God, I recognize you're with me. God, I, I look up to you. God, I worship you. Acknowledging God. Ah, is in that word. Proverbs tells us, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Most of you know that verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all night and day, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And he will direct, he will guide you. You see, God was telling, God was asking them, uh, to acknowledge the cloud and acknowledge the fire, which were representatives of his presence, to acknowledge him. And acknowledging means you recognize, you conscious of him, you talk to him, you refer to him, you defer to him every now and again. You mention him, you pause and say, God, uh, you know, I look up to you, I'm trusting in you. When you acknowledge God, he will direct your path. Don't lean on your own understanding. When you acknowledge God, He will direct your path. And let me tell you, it says in all your ways, that is both night and day, the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire were there 24 hours. God is willing to lead us 24 hours a day. God is willing. Are we willing to hunger for Him? Are we willing to value His presence 24 hours a day? Because when we value His presence 24 hours a day, He will lead us. He will lead us. Amen. I think I need to stop there for today and to challenge you to value God's presence because he has committed to be with you. He has committed to be with you. And that's what he tells us in Matthew chapter 28. That's what he tells us. And this is verse uh, 20. He says, teaching them to observe all these things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am always, even to the end of the age, I am with you always. I am with you always. Listen, even when you don't sense God's presence, He's there. Acknowledge Him. Even when you are in the darkness of the night in your life and you feel God is very far, don't be deceived by your feelings. He is there with you. Acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him. And you'll be amazed. Even when everything looks like it's not working out. Because there were moments when they were in the wilderness and there are difficulties. Just acknowledge his presence and you'll be surprised. May God guide you. Lord, help us to learn how to follow your leadership and your guidance. Even when it's dark at night, help us to appreciate and to acknowledge your presence every moment of our day. That we shall value your presence. We shall value acknowledging you. We shall practice being conscious of you. We shall practice talking to you, referring to you. We shall practice that as a way of being conscious of you. Help us, O oh God, that Proverbs chapter 3 will become true in our lives. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. May our paths be directed by you, O oh God. Night and day, night and day. Thank you, Lord. I pray especially for that person who feels like you are far from him or they are far from you in this season of their lives. I pray that you will come close, oh God, and you will minister to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God richly bless you. Some of you, if you feel you want to bless this ministry, remember you can do so. Just use M-Pesa pay bill 991648 account TV, account TV or online. And God will bless you as you do so. God bless you. See you tomorrow.